Boom. Salutations. Uh, Saturday night, I wanted to actually address something and talk about a conference that I was at called the Star Seed Adventures Conference that was exactly two weeks ago. Um, I've kind of laid low for two weeks. I'm getting a lot of information and spiritual stuff's been coming into me, so I've been kind of laying low on social media. But I wanted to make sure that I talked about this uh, conference. This is the eighth conference I've been invited to speak at now, and it was really a nice one. It was thrown by uh, Liz Laurie and also um, Journey to Truth podcast, Aaron Kuhn and uh, Tyler Koala. So it was really a nice event, all right? A um, couple of things I want to kind of say about it is, one is there were no jerks, no ass, or no a-holes there either. So that was very cool, very comforting. I thought the setting it was set up at the beach there was very cool. You could see the cruise ships out there and things like that. So that was really a good atmosphere. It was a smaller function but uh, a good one. Um, something that touched me during this is that there are a couple of individuals I got to meet. One would be um, Tony Rodriguez, and another one would be Matthew Morian, if I think I'm saying that right. And you know, it's interesting because I had kind of assumed for some reason that probably those two individuals didn't care much for me based on the fact that I'm not part of the SSP thing, okay? I've never been, I, my experiences aren't like that, and I kind of represent those that have had positive contact that are non-military. So I assume that these guys probably didn't care for me much. You know, it turns out that that was completely unfounded. And when I met these guys, uh, actually Tony Rodriguez and I had lunch and dinner together. We flew back together. He, um, really nice guy really nice guy, as was Matthew. And you know, what's cool about this is Tony has got a different story than what I have, but he was really willing to talk and he was telling me things that, look, I don't know. I haven't had the military experiences or the types he's talking about. Something's happened to him and he's trying to prove it. He's getting proof. I think that's very commendable. That's why I kind of, you know, rely on science a lot concerning my own experiences because it gives a foundation and a basis for it. So, you know, a lot of people have things have happened happen to them and they can't prove it. So I commend him for doing that. And I think it was cool how outgoing he was and how connecting with others he was on assembling memories and things. So that was very worthy, I thought. Then next, there was Matthew Morian, who was not at all like who I thought, how I thought he would be. Very polite gentleman. I believe he's Native American. I don't want to, I'm not sure. But you know, I'm going to tell you, we talked quite a bit, and that gentleman told me the most fascinating encounter with a melanin-dominant black extraterrestrial I've heard. One of, the, one of the best stories and experiences I've heard about. So we're going to be speaking about that on Journey to Truth podcast, I think in about uh, three four days. So it'll be something to tune into. Uh, I think it's worthy him telling the world about that for other people to hear it. And, you know, since coming forward about melanin-dominant black extraterrestrials and ethnic extraterrestrials, I've had, you know, so many people contact me privately saying that they've experienced this and had experience with these type of beings. Rather, and, and that goes across the gamut. Non-melanated people, Caucasians, Asians, Mexicans, I've had about every race tell me they've experienced this. So it's not nearly as an uncommon thing as the media portrays. It's very common. So that much I have discovered and learned. And, you know, the whole reason for me coming forward was to meld with the scientific community and the experiencer, real experiencer community, and also to meet other contactees, experiencers. And I've been allowed to do that. And it's been very much worth it. So meeting people like Matthew and Tony was really, um, it was very cool. But I'll tell you, I had to look at, I was thinking, well, why in the world would I think these guys didn't like me best on S, based on SSP stuff? And I realized that's another block. It's another block that's been put in this community to stop people from talking and interacting and for the information to free flow, be free flowing, you know, like that song, when they were talking about that PC, uh, free flowing or something like that. Anyway, um, <laughs> I keep it real. But, um, that's the main thing I wanted to address there, is just how what the good communication was. Other people I met there, Kate Awakening, actually, I uh, met her at the airport. We almost grabbed each other's luggage. Uh, very informed person. Uh, I got to meet Princess Janae, who is the remote viewer from Farsight Institute. Uh, 
fascinating sister. I've been kind of a fan of hers for some time, and I actually went through her remote viewing workshop she did. It was very good. So check her out if you're not hip to her already. Um, another person, uh, uh, Siobhan, very cool. Todd was there, it was from his SETI. I noticed that his SETI was a subject that kept coming up quite a bit at this conference. And you know, um, some people know I have had a problem with somebody that is closely related to that ranch and the gentleman that runs it. But look, that aside, I will not say anything negative about that ranch because if you get a chance to go, go. That property is very sacred and um, it does a lot of healing if you're a warrior that can deal with it. And there's a lot of activity out there. So if you get to go to the ranch, go check it out. I will not put that place down, but uh, I noticed it was very much a topic out there of conversation. And I think people looking for healing or some type of a property that is very active, paranormal wise, that's one of them, definitely. Anyway, so uh, I just wanted to I'll wrap that up there. That's uh, everything I really wanted to say. Just, I was very impressed by the attitude of the people there. It was a very comforting environment. A lot of good information was disseminated and it was just, it was a joy really to be there. So I, a lot of the conferences I've been to really nice, but this one, the SETI setting, really kind of made it nice because right now everything is so stressed with this virus and is it getting worse, the different strains. Oh, I'm sick of hearing it. I'm sure you are too. So uh, anyway, just things to look forward to, I think, um, as far as communication and bringing this community together and getting the real information out. You know, I have a portion of my experience that represents so much of the population that have had positive encounters or non-military. So that's one facet of it, but the other facet is those that have been traumatized by what's being done. And there's a lot of dark stuff going on, on this planet, as we know, especially concerning the interdimensional extraterrestrial contact scenario. So that's infiltrated these groups hard. You can see now how, I mean, some people are talking, instead of talking about really raising vibration and techniques and things that can do that, they want to talk about politics. You know, let's talk about about Trump, about Biden. Let's only talk about that. Focus on that. That's much more important than personal sovereignty, sovereignty and personal power. I'm seeing that a lot. I'm just saying, you know, that, that to me is not what I'm looking for right now. That isn't benefiting my daily life. Talking to other experiencers, talking to real scientists, real quantum physicists like I've been doing is changing my perspective and I'm learning. That's what I'm in this for, you know what I mean? To raise my vibration too. And I don't plan on coming back here no more. So anyway, we'll talk about that another time. Please subscribe. Um, I want to give a thank you again to the people on Patreon. I had a couple of stalkers came over there on me, but got rid of them. So I appreciate the few people there. They keep this going. That's why I'm still doing these conferences and doing any of this. I did not think this was going to go this far. I've tried as my friend that you never have actually seen PC that films these and his son Rossell makes makes the beats. Uh, I wanted to get out of this a hundred times. <laughs> it took him forever to convince me to do this, but I didn't think this channel would have the impact on people that it did. So I underestimated it. You know that's in the realm of the spirit. So thank you. Please subscribe. Hit that bell so that you get uh, notifications if I put something else out. Check out my Patreon channel if you're somebody that wants more videos. I do a lot more work over there than I do on YouTube. It's just not the predators that are over here on YouTube as much on Patreon. So check that out. So I thank you all for subscribing, for the cool comments I'm beginning. Uh, thanks again and peace.